Hey, 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 good afternoon, folks. Actually, good evening. I hope everybody had a, a wonderful weekend. It's uh, time to get back to work. A crazy freaking market that we are in. Uh, it's just a market that doesn't seem to give up. So the S&P 500 has uh, taken out yearly highs uh, once this debt ceiling uh, issue was solved. You know, we saw some weakness uh, that we usually get every couple months. Uh, and we tripped lower for about a few weeks and then Boom, as soon as uh, the inkling was done that uh, we had a deal uh, off to the races, we've gone, so new high. So now uh, we're in uncharted territory again, right? The bull is really back on uh, and uh, where we can go, you know, nobody really knows, right? This thing has gone on a, a lot longer than we've anticipated and uh, it, it can still keep going. It feels like there's still legs out that people are still buying into the market. Uh, the one thing I will say is that, you know, we've come quite a long way here, right? 100 points on the S&P in the last couple of weeks. Uh, we're super overbought. It just really extended. And so, you know, ideally some type of consolidation or pullback uh, would be ideal. You know, that would be something that really could give us pause and allow a lot of charts to refresh and set up again because right now what you're going to see is just a lot of extended stocks and so people are chasing all the stocks that haven't moved yet because essentially that's the only thing you can do right when the market has just um, escaped like that but uh, when you're this extended you know common sense says that you know some type of back and filling uh, would be you know would be nice so our, our yearly highs here is right kind of right here and so you know if we can hold above this area right then and just kind of back and fill for even a handful of days uh, that'll allow us to reset some charts and really allow us to get uh, some lower risk entries but right now uh, things are just really extended so I personally wouldn't add a bunch of swing trades right now you know stuff that you're gonna hold for three or four days because we've come a long run right if you wanted to add swing trades you needed to add it a few days ago uh, in terms of the day trading as long as the market is still going right uh, we'll be um, still very aggressive with our day trades and really going for it as the conditions are uh, really good for day trading right now. So, you know, a best case scenario is obviously the market just kind of keeps flying through. Uh, kind of a neutral scenario is that, you know, we finally just consolidate a little bit and uh, digest this move above our previous breakout spot. But you know what, even as long, you know, even if we come back and we're still holding kind of above this 1700 mark, you know, that's still to me gonna be, uh, you know, a, a still a, a very bullish type of move and pullback that probably will get bought. So, you know, that's kind of my line in the sand for now is that, you know, any type of pullbacks toward these areas um, is a gift. And so uh, I hope we get one, right? Because uh, that'll allow us to reset some charts. Uh, the NASDAQ broke out a few days ago. You know, these V type of bounces have become very common um, recently. And that's something that's kind of a, a new thing that's happened the last couple of years. But uh, V-shaped bounce right into breakout. So this too, right? Super overbought, very extended. How long can it go before we get some type of consolidation or pullback? Nobody really knows. You know, the playbook tells us that when you see a move like this and you get so extended, you have to go sideways or pull back. But this market in particular, um, its pattern has been to get really, really extended for periods of time uh, before you know you get that type of pullback or consolidation and so you know we can't discount the fact that we can go higher even though it's not necessarily logical and the playbook says you know that it shouldn't um, this you know we've kind of thrown everything out the window this last uh, this last push into the market uh, so let's look at some of these uh, uh, sectors that are hot right the the solar sector still flying here really probably the leading sector um, in terms of you know where the money is flowing in the terms of the spec money you're seeing all those solar stocks um, really break up now, this one's getting really extended too if the market does pull back this is usually you know one of the funnest uh, sectors to short because you can literally get like five ten percent um, drops in the stocks and 15 20 minutes i mean you can sh you can, when it's time and you see a crack in a solar stock like a csiq or a, you know a, a tsl or something you'll literally see you know a big multi-dollar dumps very quickly so you know those will be the some of the sectors that i'll be watching if the market pulls back because you know after such an extended move you know some type of pullback towards a 20-day moving average is usually in the cards 
And, you know, every other sector was going, you know, this whole week. You know, silver, still nothing going here, right? If you're looking at its overall chart pattern, uh, it's just a no man's zone, more of a range bound thing. So there's a lot better places to put your money than uh, silver and gold, uh, where we're just not seeing really any type of trending environment. So, you know, definitely I'd probably stay away from these. There's better money out there. Um, banks, you know, banks look like we've got a triple top breakout over here to take out um, yearly highs. So, you know, that's, that's something that uh, could be a sector that goes this week, right? You know, your JP Morgan's, Goldman Sachs, and all, the, all of those type of banks. But once again, right, super extended, um, really overbought. You know, ideally a pullback would be nice, but we just haven't, we just don't always get them. Oil. Uh, oil's been drifting down really the last couple months, right? After all this um, stuff that was happening in the Arabias has calmed down, um, you know, we've seen kind of that slow drip back down in oil. And so I don't necessarily see, you know, any play in this. We've been really just range bound for quite some time. Um, we have seen a lot of oil stocks showing some strength, but, um, you know, they've been running with the market in general. Uh, if you were ever to, you know, kind of look at something. I like I like to trade this type of stuff in my IRAs and stuff. You know, this would probably be, you know, a level that you could see a bounce. But once again, uh, there's a lot easier and better things to play out there. Uh, FXI, this is the ETF that we use to measure um, Chinese stocks. You know, still fairly bullish. Uh, this one is not extended, right? We've been essentially consolidating here. And so, you know, uh, any type of, right, push out of this consolidation and you'll see uh, possibly another run in you know the Chinese stocks uh, uh, the smaller cap Chinese stocks like you know the internet ones uh, the the three four five dollar stocks the the visions born um, Arcon, those type of uh, kind of the dirty ones have been running last week and so you know if you see a, you see a break out of this consolidation plan you know have a nice list of Chinese stocks um, around they've been the leaders in the market besides the solars for the last um, few months, you know, and so that we're talking about those, right? The Cena's, Sohu's, you know, Yoku. See, these are really nice charts and really strong stocks. And obviously, we've seen some really extended, uh, fly, you know, crazy moves in these Chinese stocks. Also, in terms of vision, the lower float ones, right? DQ. Uh, once a sector goes, right, people start throwing money at anything, and that's kind of where we're seeing in these Chinese names right now. So. I, you know, keep a list of them for both longs and shorts. You know, we had a couple great shorts. Uh, we had a great short in uh, Born last week. You know, we shorted this thing, I believe, like 380, 377, 380. Um, you know, just a really nice, you know, tank job off that. They get extended and you can play them back the other way. So, you know, have a list of them, right? You can play them long and short. Let's see, housing, right? So housing's probably a sector to keep an eye on just because... We're not necessarily, you know, this is one of the few that's not extended right now. And if we do see really a big market run, you know, people will try to start picking off some of the sectors that are not extended. So you'll start to see a rotation from the ones that are really extended, like maybe Chinese names and solars. And they'll start coming into some of these um, other sectors that have just been chilling. So that's something to always, uh, you know, keep an eye on. That's one of the things that you really got to do in your trading. It's just, you know, uh, where, where's the next hot, you know, where are the next hot moves going to be? And, you know, that's why you really want to keep an idea and a track of really all the different sectors. And uh, I like to use like, um, there's a website I called like tickerspy.com. You can use something like that if you don't, if you don't keep track of the individual sectors via ETF. You know, you can use um, a tool like TickerSpy and they'll tell you really what all the hot sectors are and all the, you know, where all the momentum is on a daily basis or a monthly basis, weekly basis. So a lot of different tools, but you got to know uh, what's popping and what's not. So that's really it, guys. The market has been flying. You know, all the charts look strong, so there's really no point in flipping through a million of them. Um, protect your risk, you know. When you start getting extended, you know, pullback can come out of nowhere, but... In this market, in absence of news, in absence of news, um, you know, if we're just trading in a vacuum, uh, the market has typically just grinded, grinded higher without really any sharp pullbacks. You know, they've been very light or we've just had consolidations. Uh, really, the major pullbacks that we've had have been, um, right, uh, news driven.
right due to political things and economic things and so on and so forth so interest rates and fed talk and this talk so in absence of that this market does tend to grind higher and get more extended than we uh, anticipate so trade the price action that you're seeing rather than you know making assumptions of uh, what should happen so that's it for now guys uh take care and uh, i'll be up with a watch list in a handful of minutes